Hola amigos, this is going to be the first video that I'm going to upload in my YouTube channel. And this would be about the history of England. We'll have a short discussion from the period of the arrival of Celts to the Norman conquest of 1066. So if you have any suggestions, please let me know through the comment section. And thank you for watching this video. I hope this would be useful for you all. So let's begin. Ireland and Britain are the two major islands among the scattered group of 5,500 islands that constitute the British Isles in Europe. England, Scotland, and Wales are the three important political divisions of the island of Great Britain. And the constitutional name of the country would be United Kingdom of Great Britain and North Ireland. And the UK is separated from the continent by the English Channel as well as the North Sea. And the insular position of the United Kingdom paved way for numerous invaders and settlers who invaded England. And at the same time, the position of the England fostered the development of distinct English cultures, laws, and customs. And the earliest to settle down in England were the Iberians, and the name came from Iberia, the ancient name of Spain, and Celts. And the Celts who settled down in the southern part of the England were known as Britons, and hence the name Britain for the land. So that was a short introduction. Now let's discuss in detail regarding the arrival of Celts. So Celts were fierce warriors and they arrived in England about 300 to 500 BC and even though they were fierce warriors they lacked political skills and they worshipped nature and their leaders were known as druids and druids were not only religious re leaders but they also settled down disputes between the people and they in fact, were given a significant position among the tribes and they were even considered as the judges. And the languages that were widely spoken during that, that time were the Celtic and the Gaelic language. So Gaelic language could be considered as a root of the modern Welsh. And it's considered, it's considered that during the arrival of the Celts, the Iron Age also began during that period. And as I told you, they worship nature. Everything in the nature were considered as worthy of worshiping and everything. They believed that nature was lively and it had a divine appearance or it had a divine existence. And Celts arrived in England in waves. There were numerous tribes and they invaded England in different times as in, in waves. And now we'll discuss about the Roman conquest. So the historically significant Roman conquest happened in 55 BC. In fact, it was between the arrival of the Celts that happened in 300 BC to the Anglo-Saxon conquest that happened in AD 410. So in 55-54 BC, Caius Julius is a lad, not to very successful expeditions to Britain. And even though the expeditions did not yield much on the political front, it helped England to open up trade with Europe and also to have initiated a contact with the European civilization. And Romans were actually a highly civilized group. And however, it was only much later under the ages of Emperor Claudius in AD 43 that the actual Roman occupation took place in Britain. And the Roman conquest lasted for about four centuries and it left an indelible mark in Britain. And they constructed towns, they built towns and they facilitated the movement of goods and people with the construction of roads. And this was something that was much beyond the rural Celtic village structure. And they also built walls to protect Celts from the Picts and Scots. There were other tribes that occupied in England, in other parts of the England. And 
and uh, some of the walls include the Hadrian's Wall, and they were in fact there. They were highly sophisticated at that time. And on the religious front, if you see, you can. Uh, it's considered that Christianity was introduced during this time, even though the advent of Christianity is directly linked with the mission of Augustine in AD 597. However, Christianity could be said to have arrived much before an organized attempt to convert the English. So how did this happen? Christianity arrived in England when the Roman artisans and traders who arrived in Britain started spreading stories about Jesus Christ along with the stories of their Roman pagan deities. And then everything was going good till then until in AD 410, Romans withdrew their troops from England. So what happened then? Devoid of the protection of the Romans, the Celts became an easy prey to the pigs and the Scots. And this gradually enabled the Anglo-Saxon conquest. And their appeal to the Jews enabled the Anglo-Saxon conquest. So this was all about the Roman conquest. And now let's discuss in detail what, what is the Anglo-Saxon invasion and who are the Anglo-Saxons. So the Anglo-Saxon invasion happened in AD 410 because of the appeal of the Celts to the Jews for help as they were devoid of the protection of Romans. And Anglo-Saxons were a marvelous group. And they were uh, they consisted of three major tribes: Angles, Saxons, and Jutes. And they were barbaric and heathen Teutons who arrived from the region between Germany and Denmark. So on settling down in England, they adopted the common name English, and the tongue they also brought into the land was also called as England. So the Anglo-Saxon conquest could be considered as a significant event that changed the history of England considerably. So Anglo-Saxons were a marvelous mixture of savagery and sentiment of rough living and of deep feeling. Even though they were less civilized than that of Normans, they had an effective local government. They had a system of self-government with many units, the kingship at the apex, the Whiten, that's the king's council, the hundred, the shire, and the township. And the king headed the hierarchy, and he had he was vested with the powers of executive, legislative, and judicial powers. And they had an ingrained passion for action, which expressed itself in battles as well as in fighting. And women were treated with extreme respect, and they were given liberties and freedom. They were allowed private influence as well as intervention in public affairs. It, in fact, could be considered much surprising because women enjoyed an equal status as that of men, the status that they would soon lose with the Norman conquest, wherein a military society was to re envision the status of women. And when another thing that's to be noted is that the Anglo-Saxons destroyed almost all the vestiges of the Roman civilization and the land remained heathen until it was embraced by Christianity in AD 597. Now let's discuss about the Anglo-Saxon settlement. So the Anglo-Saxon settlement is considered as a significant event in the history of England. So Kent, where the was the first kingdom to be established. So the Jews arrived in England for the first time in AD 449. And they uh, Kent comprised of the Jews. And then they settled down in Kent. And then the Saxons came and they settled down in the northern and western part of London. And they established the kingdoms Essex, Wessex, and Sussex. And then Angles. Angles came and they occupied the northern part of the Saxonic settlement and they established the kingdoms East Anglia, Mercia, and Northumbria. 
So finally, in AD 613, the southeastern conquest of England was complete and the Anglo-Saxon heptarchy of the seven kingdoms were established, which included Kent, comprising of Jutes, Essex, Wessex, and Sussex, comprising of Saxons, East Anglia, Mercia, and Northumbria, comprising of the Angles. And then there were no mutual amity among the three kingdoms. I'm sorry, no mutual amity among these kingdoms. And initially, East Anglia, Mercia, Northumbria, and Wessex emerged as the dominant kingdoms. But the 7th and 8th centuries saw the dominance of East Anglia and Mercia. And however, Wessex dominated in the 9th and 10th century. So we can now see that Wessex attained quite a uh, significant political supremacy and it was also conferred on its dialect that's a west saxon dialect during that period now let's discuss about the viking invasion so everything was going well till then in ad 787 the seafaring scandinavians arrived in britain let's discuss about that in detail so the vikings viking invasion happened in England in AD 787. And then the seafaring Scandinavians arrived and they comprised of the Danes, Norsemen, as well as the uh, Scandinavians. So the political unification of the seven kingdoms was effected with the invasion of the seafaring Scandinavians. And this common danger compelled the seven kingdoms to unite under the able leadership of King Egbert. So King Egbert was the king of Wessex and he defeated the Danes in AD 836. However, the Danes renewed their raids and started conquering larger portions of East Anglia, Mercia, and Northumbria. However, they met their match in King Egbert's grandson, King Alfred, who defeated the Danes in the Battle of Eddington. And then he resisted the onslaughts of the Danes and kept them at bay by sharing England with them. So by the Treaty of Bedmores that happened in 8878, a line was drawn from Chester to London and the Danes were allowed to occupy the northern part of this line, which later came to be known as the Dane Low. And then so the there was a uh, the West Saxon lines was lost for a I mean there was a break in the line of West Saxon king for a few centuries when this happened for a few years this happened when during the massacre of the Saint Brises Day so Saint Brises Day there was a foolish attack of the King Ethel Ethelred to the Danes and this brought England under the sway of Spain, the Danish king. And then for some years, his son Canute ruled. And then uh, until his Canute son, an oppressive king, Hardy Canute's death in AD 1042, the West Saxon line of kings was restored when Ethelred's son, King Edward the Confessor, Edward the Confessor was the chosen king. And then uh, his, the West Saxon line of kings were restored. So the reassertion of English control happened in AD 1042. And then in AD 1000, in 1066, what happened was the Norman conquest when the Duke of Normandy, William of Normandy arrived in England and then entered the Anglo-Saxon invasion that lasted for long six centuries. And then England was brought under the Norman York. So that was all about the Viking invasion and the Norman conquest. We'll discuss about the Norman invasion and the features of the Norman period, the Middle English period in the coming chapters or in the next videos. And now let's discuss about the introduction or the advent of Christianity during this period. So the, uh, what to say, the conversion of the Anglo-Saxons is directly linked to the political development of the seven kingdoms. So in, uh, and this is considered to be also associated with the mission of St. Augustine and St. Aidan. So uh, their mission, in fact, affected the conversion of the English into Christianity.
and Kent was the first kingdom to enter the Christian fold, and its king, King no, King Ethelbert, had Bertha, who was a Frankish Christian. So Bertha was a Frankish Christian, and probably her influence led to the decision of Pope Gregory I to send a group of missionaries to Kent in AD 597. And then that led to the conversion of Kent and Kent under the Christian fold. And so the, uh, the head of the group of the missionaries that was St. Augustine was made the Archbishop of Canterbury. And then soon the Northumbrian King Edwin married Ethelbert's daughter. And that led to the conversion of Northumbria. Northumbria under Christian fold also with the influence of Pope Gregory I. And by AD 681, entire England became Christian and turned to the Christian fall. And learning at this time was largely associated with Christianity and the introduction of Christianity led to the advent or gave an impetus to learning. And education at this time was uh, is truly the domain of monks and priests. So the monks and priests occupied in Northumbria and it came to be known as the Northumbrian school or monastery and the monasteries of Whitby and Jarrow were its chief centers. So in fact the advent of Christianity had influenced the English society and the people and it gave an introduction to learning as well as enriched the vocabulary. And this was actually a brief description about the Anglo-Saxon, I mean, from the Celts to the Normans, and I hope it was informational. And if you can provide me with any suggestions, please, please do that in the comment section. And if you ever found this useful, please like, share, and subscribe. And let me know if you want me to do content on any other topics. So I'll work on that. And the next video will be discussing about the Anglo-Saxon literature. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you all. Adios, amigos.